Welcome to the sixth episode of my uh, Legends slash Expanded Universe chronological ratings where I go through the Expanded Universe's, uh, all of its media and rank each and every one of them out of ten stars. <sighs> Today we have Dawn of the Jedi Into the Void, our first novel, which should be a blessing, but instead it's a curse. Uh, it was written by Tim Lebin, and uh, it was published in 2013. Its in universe uh, year is 25,973 BBY, uh, and it was published by Del Rey. So in this one, we continue to follow uh, Lenori Brock, who is the Jedi Ranger who we have followed in uh, Eruption in the Adventures of Lenori Brock, Jedi Ranger. And uh, in this one, uh, the Jedi Council call her back to Tython and tell her that her brother, Dalian Brock, who we'll later find out was a former student, is now planning to uh, activate the Hypergate, which is on Tython, which was planted there by the Qua and is uh, one of the like Infinity Gates. And so he's planning to activate this. And even though this is ancient times, 25,000 years before A uh, New Hope, uh, they're talking about the Qua as ancient people themselves. The Qua are ancient even to them as an alien species. Uh, so I thought that was interesting that there could be something ancient even in this early time in the galaxy uh, for <clears throat> us, the reader. Um, and so we learn that Dalian like, doesn't like the Force. He doesn't approve of it. And he's like tries to make himself stronger without it and stuff like that. So that, that was somewhat interesting. But we got more character development for Dalian Brock, her brother, in the novel focused on her. She's really boring. And she's a really by-the-book Jedi. So there's not a lot of like fun with her. She's very steely, very serene. Um, very focused on the mission, which, like, that's the good thing to have, but it's not entertaining for the reading of it. They didn't really give her any character to work with um, in this novel uh, because she's just really boring. Uh, she's completely by the books, uh, completely I'm going to be the good, the good little Jedi and uh, do the things the right way. There's no, like... Uh, there's nothing to her uh, character that uh, makes her interesting or stand out. There's nothing she disagrees with with the Jedi. She's pretty much content to, you know, do what the Council tells her. And so she's uh, traveling through the Tython system, searching for her brother and searching via his various associates and uh, people who are following him because he's accumulated followers in the time since he's been presumed dead. And so she's looking for him with a scoundrelous rogue named Trey Sana. And Trey Sana is the only character in this book that I cared about. Trey Sana was somewhat interesting. Um, and he had some character to him. He, it's generic. It's He's the hero who acts all tough and scoundrelous and uh, rogue. He, he's the rogue with the heart of gold is what I'm trying to say. He uh, He's just that generic kind of trope that we see lots of uh, uh, um, over and over again in Star Wars. We see that trope used lots of times, and here we see it again, but this is a, a Twi'lek named Tresana. Uh, there's lots of stuff that happens, but it feels like nothing really happens because all she's doing is traveling around the system searching for her brother because the council thinks that she can, like, have a sibling pool and be able to stop him from going and activating the hypergate. Uh, but it inevitably, um, she's gone around in a circle and they go back to Tython, um, where he's trying to activate the hypergate and, uh, she has to kill him with uh, her sword, and um, it's very sad. It's extremely sad. Um, 
but uh, by the end of it, like, she regrets killing her brother and all of that, which I'm sure you would, but it's not nearly as impactful as uh, a certain sister-on-brother killing later in uh, Legacy of the Force. Uh, what's really jarring about it, though, is it keeps flashing backwards in time. Uh, it keeps going um, several years prior when she was being trained to be a Jedi, and so... Every other chapter, there's a chapter in the present, and then the next chapter is her in the past being trained with her brother. I think it's supposed to garner um, our sympathy for that um, she's eventually going to have to kill her brother, and it's supposed to make us like, like be invested in their relationship. But instead, it made me frustrated because it felt like it was taking longer to do anything. Both storylines were incredibly dull, the one in the present and the one where she's being trained, and they spent way too long training her. It added nothing new or interesting to the storyline and didn't develop her character. It was just like, here, we'll show you her training. And uh, there, there was this uh, this likable character, uh, well, somewhat likable character who was a Jedi. Uh, he may have seemed interested in Lenore, and uh, if I remember correctly, Dalian killed him uh, when he runs off uh, and then is eventually presumed dead, and then he comes back as a villain. Uh, so that it, it shows the um, the catalyst that prompts Dalian's turning uh, turning heel, so to speak. Um, but it just wastes so much time letting them learn the properties of the Force that we've learned over and over and over again and seen, and it doesn't do it any differently. So it's just the same, the same, the same uh, concepts we've seen in other media, except with two characters that we don't care about and told alternating every chapter. So it really takes you out of both stories because it's jarring to go back and forth so consistently. It feels like it's two books that they smashed into one book, um, which just feels really jarring. Like a flashback every now and then is fine, but when it's alternating, practically pretty much every other chapter goes back and forth between it. It felt really jarring and took you out of both stories, which to begin with, both of the stories are pretty dull anyways. Um, and they start the chapters off with quotes by uh, past Jedi, uh, so that that was somewhat interesting. Like, for example, at the heart of any poor soul, not at one with the Force, there is only void. That was an unknown Jedi, 2,545 years bef after the Thor, your arrival. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what it stands for. Um, and then we get some diaries. Um, at the start, there's a quote from, uh, for example, In your early years, the flow of the Force might seem frightening, shocking, finding balance between its light and dark facets, and the flow will become a powerful stillness. Struggle against the Force, and your body rebels. Fight with the Force, and you have the universe on your side. Temple Master Vordana, Stav Kesh, 10,441 Thor, your arrival, uh, but it doesn't tell us if it's before, before or after. I guess it only makes sense to be after, since the Thor is the catalyst that uh, starts the Jedi Order, and it wouldn't make sense for it to happen before. But those quotes are more interesting than the story. If it was a book just filled with philosophical quotes from past Jedi uh, masters and uh, from past diaries, it would have been more interesting than the really bland, generic story that we got. I didn't care about her, and I didn't care about her brother. Uh, if it had been focused on Trey Sana doing illegal things in the Tython system, going from planet to planet, being illegal, he's quite humorous, uh, and I would have enjoyed that a lot better than the story that we got. Um, so, overall positives, Trey Sana, I was interested in the quotes that were every chapter, so that was something to look forward to. Um, overall negatives, uh, Lenore Brock, Dalian Brock. Um, the storyline, the way that it shifted between two separate storylines, how dull and boring it is, how drawn out it is, how it doesn't go anywhere, uh, the, how the resolve is n supposed to be an emotional uh, conclusion to Dalian and Lenore's story in the novel, and it just has no emotional reaction for me at all. Um, the, the terrible thing is, I was, even though I didn't like Dalian, with how boring and bland Lenore is, by the end of it, you're almost rooting on Dalian to open the hypergate like he wants, um, because 
he is at least somewhat more interesting than Lenore. It's really not a good thing when the antagonist uh, is more favorable in your mind than the protagonist. You know you've done something wrong as an author if uh, if that's the reaction of uh, one of the readers. So the negatives clearly outweigh the positives here. Uh, I recently ranked all of the Star Wars Legends novels from worst to best uh, with Marcel Ryan, the revanchist, on a stream. Uh, it's a two-parter, and it's on the channel, so you can check it out if you want. And this comes last. This is the worst Star Wars novel there is. Um, skimming back through it to remember what the story is, because it's so forgettable. Like, oh my gosh, it felt like a chore to even open the pages. Um, <clears throat> I, do, I do want to note, though, that there is a... a, a one of my favorite species are the Cathars, just because they look really cool. They're like these cat people, um, and they th there's one in Legacy Comics, and they're quite prominent in Swotor and Kotor, and they appear in some other places where there's a Cather in this novel, which means the Cather were contacted by the Thoyor as well, and her character's name is uh, Dam Powell, and uh, she's uh, one of the master characters. And so she was more interesting than uh, Lenori because she was a Cather. It was just... With how dull Lenori is, the least they could have done is made her an alien so that she would have been more interesting to read about. For some reason, just... Um, if the protagonist is a, a, an alien species, it just makes it slightly more interesting than a human one. So... I was more interested in this tiny little character who we met for a little while. She was all, like, tough and angry and grr, cat lady. Um, all um, angry and tough. And she seemed interesting to me. She reminded me of uh, Saba Sabatane, uh, but we didn't get enough of her um, to really generate any care. I was just, like, intrigued because I think the Cather are really unique and interesting. Uh, but... We were in and out and done learning about Dan Powell. Um, she got like three sentences. Uh, so even then, that's not a positive. That's just a, a footnote. I should mention there's a Cather Jedi here because I think that's interesting and unique. And the other sort of interesting footnote is uh, a character named La Mi who uh, appears in it. He's one of the Jedi uh, Council Temple Masters who... Uh, sends Lenori on the mission to find Dalian. He's one of the Jedi Masters with Dan Powell who uh, sends her on the mission. And Lami is actually from the Dawn of the Jedi comics. I believe he is the only Dawn of the Jedi comic character to appear or be mentioned in Into the Void. When it's a comic series book duo that's supposed to be building off of one another in the same era... And the only character from the comics that appears in the novel is Lami, who got maybe two panels in the comics. You know you've done something wrong. And it's not about how little he appeared in the comic and how little he appeared in the book. Just put more characters in both for crying out loud. You know, you just put one character to cross over to remind everyone that it's connected. So Lami is a, a, a Dai Bendu uh, Jedi who appears in the comic and he uh, was in Into the Void. So I, I just thought that's worth mentioning as well. I believe the only crossover character between them discounting uh, this short story eruption. So my rating for this one is uh, 3 of 10. It's really dull, really boring, really generic. Didn't care about the characters. Uh, the only character I liked was Tresana. Uh, I've already explained all of this, but just to sum it up, it's really dull, boring, nothing worthwhile happens, and I'm convinced that this is the worst EU novel. And people who don't think this is the worst EU novel should reread Into the Void and try not to fall asleep because it is that boring and slow and uninteresting. The characters are that forgettable and unmemorable i just can't convey to you how the first time i read this it started to feel like um a book report book where you're having to read it because you have to write a paper on it at the end you know you have to do it to get the grade well it felt like a chore 
to get through into the void. It felt like I was only doing it because I had a paper on it in school and a grade was going to be determined based on it. It's, it wasn't a source of entertainment or enjoyment. I was just like eventually just reading for the sake of saying I've read it. Like after the first chapter, I was like, oh boy, I have to just get through this. Uh, and that is not a good testament to the book. Uh, it's a shame this is the first one in order, because uh, that means for new EU fans looking to read in chronological order, this is their first uh, their first experience of the expanded universe, and this does not in any way reflect the high quality of the expanded universe. Uh, so this one is just really bad. However, that being said, I would have been interested to see more Dawn of the Jedi novels, like. In in my mind, I'm envisioning the comic going like 40 issues and the books having five or six books. If they would have had time to flesh out the characters eventually, it's an interesting era, so isolated from the rest of the expanded universe that you can really play around in it and still set up connections and seeds to be planted for later. Like the uh, Infinity Gate uh, is a connection to several pieces of media within the expanded universe. Uh, but I would have been interested to have more Dawn of the Jedi novels if they weren't as terrible as this one. But it's really a shame that the Dawn of the Jedi novel we got was this, because this is completely uninteresting uh, compared comparatively with the comic book, it's uninteresting, and comparatively with anything, it's uninteresting. It's just quite a shame. I don't know if I've ever met anyone who's given a positive review. Everyone has been mediocre and on the lower end. But uh, what about you, viewers? What did you think of Into the Void? Would you, what would you give it out of 10? Would it beat my 3? Or would it go lower? Because I think there is room for this to go lower in how many stars I give it out of 10 rather than higher. It's 3 with the possibility of a 2. So, what would you give it out of 10?